And just like the like human rights lawyer Femi Falano, human rights lawyer Mondo Obani has berated President Mohamed Buhari for overruling the Supreme Court's order on the all 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes. Speaking during a live interview, Obani maintained that the president's intervention should have been to allow the apex court to resolve the matter and not cut short the process. According to him, the president has flagrantly disobeyed the court, which shows a dangerous precedence and a way of taking away the confidence of the country's judicial process. And we are now being joined by another legal practitioner, DG Awobi Day. Welcome to News Now, Mr. Awobi Day. Thank you for having me. Well, it looks to me as if the judiciary is being slapped in the face with the back and forth banter from the court and from the federal government. Well, well evidently, it's, I mean, for, if you look at the, the antecedents of this president, uh, you would find that he's never really shown any serious respect for the courts. Um, right from the time that he's been running for the office against uh, President Obasanjo all the way down to when he became elected. He's had you know, his own fair share of um, uh, dealings with the judiciary, and I believe that possibly did not leave a good taste in his mouth. So you would find that from the very beginning, his approach to judiciary has been one of disdain. Um, I mean, it takes me back to when the home of it, the judges were raided re 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 when he assumed office. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of outcry uh, against that raid. And of course, it did not stop there. There have been several orders that have been made by the courts that this government has ignored. So I'm not surprised that this government is doing the path it's currently towing by uh, trying to circumvent uh, the independence of the judiciary by trying to override what the courts um, um, have, have asked parties to maintain. The order of injunction that was granted by the Supreme, by the apex court, that's not just any ordinary court, it's the apex court of the land. And you have a president the very next day after the court proceeding uh, going around, uh, going about circumventing that particular position. So I'm not surprised that uh, the judiciary is being, uh, is being treated this way. Uh, really, it, it really is not surprising, uh, having regard to the antecedent of the current president. The court was to reconvene on February 22nd before the president's broadcast today. Uh, what does the law say about such actions where the court speaks and uh, it is not obeyed and there's another right. directive from the central government, you know, countering the court's order? Oh, absolutely. It's a um, very, very clear case of contempt. Um, I mean, you heard other uh, senior legal practitioners uh, did mention that I mean, the court, the, the action of the president is contemptuous of the court, because what is what this means is that um, if you do not, if you as a government do not respect the judiciary, then it, I mean, it, it naturally flows down to the people that they themselves would ignore uh, orders of court, because you don't forget that it's not just about this president. It's also about the governors, it's also about the average, the common man. Uh, if the courts make an order, they expect all parties involved to maintain status quo and allow that dispute to be resolved by the courts. Uh, well, unfortunately, you have a situation where you, uh, the, the uh, president, who is the no number one uh, citizen of the country, who is the leader of the executive arm of government, has gone ahead in total disregard of the apex courts to make the declarations that he made yet this morning concerning the notes. Don't forget that the APS court had said that the order that was previously granted ex parte will subsist until the hearing of the motion on notice. And I believe that, that the last proceedings, all parties were, were asked to file their papers and their briefs of arguments concerning the issues that were placed before the court. And don't also forget that the president himself said in his address this morning that the matter is sub judice meaning that the matter is pending before a court of law. Despite acknowledging that the matter is sub judice, he still went ahead to do as he did this morning. And that, for me, is, is, is a clear case of contempt on the part of, of the government, particularly when 
they are they have a council and the very respected in advocates can like be acting for them there um they have been they have they have been sued as a party in the proceedings the issue that the court has been asked to address is the issue that affects the policy it's from their own policy that the court has been invited to make to, to give an opinion rightly or wrongly about the um the 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 policy and the, the suspension of the old notes so um in a normal society when the court speaks everybody listens but of course it appears to me that this government has always continued to show that this is our society under their own tenure is not a normal one and uh, I, 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 honestly i'm sure that many nigerians cannot wait to see the back of this government coming 29. Hmm. And um, many Nigerians, uh, just like you and I, and I believe that you know already that some Nigerians still have the old 500 Naira and 1,000 Naira, perhaps expecting when the Supreme Court will come, out, come up again with um, its verdict on the new, uh, the old and the new Naira notes. So as we speak, some Nigerians still have these notes with them. And um, as I said earlier, we're expecting that by 22nd, perhaps, they would have been able to deposit before then, before they could hear what the Supreme Court has next to say. So the battle is between two elephants and the ground is suffering. The ground here are Nigerians. What should be the next line of action? Well... As it, as it appears now, um, it, it seems to me that based on the address of the president this morning, that the CBN would um, inform Nigerians as to how to go about depositing the old 1,500 notes. Um, unfortunately, um, after the expectation of the, of the apex court was granted, many Nigerians, you know, if they sigh of relief, uh, you could see that, I mean, a lot of... Um, Commercial activities continued regularly mm -hmm. because everybody was awaiting the outcome of the court proceeding. And um, yesterday, um, when the courts uh, did adjourn to the 22nd of February, indeed, many, um, many common, I mean, the average Nigerians I met um, were even telling me and asking me, oh, that the courts have adjourned to the 22nd, so we can keep spending the money on the 22nd. You know, so, but the banks have refused to accept the money, the old notes. Uh, so that has spread panic across uh, the country. You have many people who, who cannot do regular activities because of uh, this problem that the government has imposed on everybody. And uh, unfortunately, it's a policy that has failed to work. Everybody can see that it's not working. And I, I think it's an acknowledgement of the fact that it's not working that made the president to give the address that he gave this morning. But sadly, uh, infusing the China notes back into the con into the economy will not solve the problem. Um, I mean, uh, the the higher notes, one thousand and have higher notes, are the notes that people have more of than the China notes. Also, don't forget that the ATMs are not configured for China notes, and of course, the banks will take a while to for, to for configure all the ATMs to start dispensing China notes. So basically, you're only compounding the problem. You're not solving the problem. You're compounding it. And the people that will feel it are the average Nigerians. Originally, it was thought that it was Governor Mefili who was uh, the, uh, the brain behind all of this uh, uh, policy. But you can see that clearly is the voice of uh, 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 Jacob and the hand of uh, Esau. Because you can see clearly that, it, that the president is the mastermind of all of this um, activity. Even though there are conspiracy theories about whether or not uh, the policy is aimed at ensuring that and the politicians do not spend money on election day and all of those things. Any policy that is to be introduced must first take into account the realities of its people, the realities of the average Nigerian, the common man who needs to transact, who needs to do business on a daily basis, who does not have the luxury of having an account officer bring monies to their house. So you have these politicians who, who, you are, who, who this policy is aimed at. I mean, I, I, I did see uh, the CBN governor explaining the policy and its benefits. But of course, those that the policy is aimed at have the means of getting back this money. They have the means of getting these new notes. I have not, I do not have more than 1,000 new notes in my wallet. I haven't been able to access the new notes. I've been doing transfers and my transfers have been hanging. They've been failing, they've been hanging. So what exactly is uh, the, the objective? 
for the common man, it just created a lot more problem for the average Nigerian. And it's not his policy as well thought out. Even though the, the idea might be, uh, uh, might be impressive on paper, but in reality, when you bring a policy out and you try to execute the policy, and you do find, you find along the way that there are impediments to, to actually actualizing the aims of the policy, you should revert back to status quo. Mr. Wobi, uh, I think the network there won't allow us to have further conversation on this.